Around the world, environmentalists are fighting to save wilderness areas for future generations. While in many countries that battle is turning militant, in Papua New Guinea, children are on the peaceful front line. Papua New Guinea is high priority. Its jungles are a green treasure and its waters are considered to be the most precious on the globe. Dateline's John Bennett looks at the fight to save PNG's coral reefs. Sunrise over the tranquil waters of Kimby Bay in Papua New Guinea's West New Britain province. Beneath these waters is one of the most biodiverse and unique environments on the planet. And behind the tranquility is a unique struggle to conserve this precious resource. Andrew Barter is a Kimby Bay community leader managing an issue unheard of when he was younger. He's closed a number of his people's reefs for rehabilitation part of Papua New Guinea's first community managed marine conservation area. Long look look past them long sample something by come up past them and then but me play surki mo yet sample something go out can not a pla rip can but me pla for kim can tambim can. According to marine scientists there's more here in need of conservation than anywhere else in the world. That includes Australia's Great Barrier Reef. In this particular area you also get an enormous number of species that evolved here and are only found here. Just in general terms of biodiversity, um, most of the species that are found on the Great Barrier Reef are also found up here, but there's also an additional 20 or 30 percent of species. People have been part of the natural balance in Kimby Bay for more than 35,000 years. But in the last 35 years, that relationship has been on tenterhooks. You know, we, we need to conserve these things for our children and their children. Uh, you know, at, the, at the rate that uh, the resources are exploited now, uh, you know, especially along the coast, it's just uh, alarming. Kimby Bay's commercial fishing industry is booming, but poorly regulated. High prices for delicacy species like beche de mer have fuelled the spread of destructive practices such as drag netting and dynamite fishing on the reefs. Hey, Remarkably, those coming to the rescue of the reefs in Kimby Bay are children. In the local tongue, they're Mahonya Nadari, which translates as guardians of the sea. They're being recruited into this role by a small conservation organisation that bears the same name. What? Oh my God, that's the biggest catfish I've ever seen. Yeah. Our mission statement basically is to, to create uh, understanding uh, of the marine environment, um, instill it in a, in a young age, um, Educating future generations, the ambassadors uh, of conservation, they're the ones who will make changes in, for the future. Okay, so here we have the sea cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to have a hold? Just be careful, um, don't squeeze it. Don't. Sometimes they start, <laughs> water starts coming out. The Mahonia Nadari program began just four years ago. But its conservation message now reaches 14,000 young Papua New Guineans every year. Schools from all over the country send classes to the organisation's facilities on the shores of Kimby Bay. These children are the future resource owners and for them to have the education that we're giving to them now at a, such a young age, hopefully that would be able to influence them to make better decisions when, when their time comes when they will take the role as a, a leader of their community. 
For many of the students, Mahonia opens up a new world. Most have a profound understanding of their terrestrial environment, passed on from their parents and generations before them. Yet, with the planet's richest marine ecosystem on their doorstep, many Papua New Guineans admit ignorance of their marine environment. I thought that the um, coral reefs of plants, colorful plants that live underwater, and they were just there to decorate the sea. I've seen plenty of reefs at home, and I walked on them, and I just thought they were pieces of rock that just have color, and they were nothing much. And now I came in, and I know they're all living stuff. Students at Mahonia undertake courses up to 13 days long. They learn the basic science of the sea and techniques to monitor its condition. The courses also make the link between the health of the seas and coastal land use practices. Some people that live by the sea but don't know that much are affecting the sea in a various um, uh, disastrous form. I'd probably speak to them because, um, you know, they need to know more. The secret of Mahonia's success is that students take the conservation message back to their communities. Uh, now when I go back to my village, I'll think better of where I put my feet and um, tell my people how to look after it. And that um, it's not just a clump of rock, it's living. Hey, lady. We got one flower idea, yeah? Like you be walking one flower. Some flower pushing rock, pull on canoe, he go on rip. Now kissing planted peas, now walking... Ironically, Mahonia's greatest ambassadors are a pair of young environmental vandals. Lenny and Nico are characters in a Punch and Judy style puppet show which tours villages and schools. Yo, donkey. The boys' antics raise plenty of laughs, but deal with the serious issue of poison rope fishing. It's the widespread and highly destructive practice of dumping poison from a toxic vine onto the reef to stun fish, but killing coral in the process. No, when talking to the children, it's, it does not help too much. So when we do puppet play and this, it will help them because it, it will stay in their minds when they go out to the village, they will tell their friends. They'll tell their mothers and fathers about this, what they've seen in senior school. Demand for Mahonia's courses outstrips available places by 10 to 1. The organisation now trains teachers to take the program into schools. That is another uh, partner that we work with, is the National Curriculum Development Unit um, that we work very strongly with and through them hopefully we could um, work on our curriculums throughout the whole country for, for every school. Mahonia's true success though is not measured in student numbers. To gain this knowledge means to help our future and help this coral reef so it protects us and it protects them and it benefits to everyone. Mahonia's true success is on the reefs where the impact of the programs means less impact on the environment.